trolls in most games, maybe even all games, have something to do with life regeneration. And having a lot of life regeneration works best with Righteous Fire build. That's why I call this the Righteous Troll build. Now, this build is tanky, but not as tanky as I would like it to be. You can do almost any map mods, but the clear speed is obviously not that great. The damage is also not very high, but it can be improved. This build is uh, relatively cheap. Of course, comes hard help a lot, but you can use our armor. Also, Scorching Ray is perfect for this build. Now, to achieve this high life regeneration, I am using two Calmsway rings. Combine it with Juggernaut and you end up with 10 Endurance Charges. So, with 10 Endurance Charges, each of these rings gives 4% life regeneration. So, you get 8% life regeneration just from your rings. There is another node in passive skill tree that gives another 2% life regeneration at 10 Endurance Charges. So, just like that you have 10% life regeneration. Now all you have to do is increase your life pool, take more life regeneration nodes from passive skill tree, few jealous slots, few fire damage nodes, elemental damage nodes and increase the area of effect nodes. So that's the basic. Now let's go deeper into this build, I will talk about leveling process, alternative items, more about skill tree, gems, links and overall pros and cons. I started using righteous fires from surprise level 45. At that time I had 8 endurance charges and I was using the oak shield which has a lot of maximum life and also 1% life regeneration per second. 6.4% life regeneration per second from rings, some more from passive skill tree, a little more from stone golem and it was nearly enough to sustain righteous fire. If I needed I could use life flask or ruby flask to refill my life and it was enough for cruel difficulty. Oops, I forgot to mention purity of fire of course. And by that time I was also using Vitality Aura and casting flammability curse manually, Scorching Ray for extra damage and to reduce enemy fire resistances. For weapon I was using Ash Color Wand. Spell damage that it has increases only Scorching Ray damage, however increased burning damage increases Righteous Fire damage and Scorching Ray damage. So weapon and shield are very cheap. For helmet I was using the Formless Flame. You can use our helmet but I wanted more armor and this helmet increases armor by uncapped fire resistance and it does give quite a lot of armor. Rest of my gear is just needed to have a lot of life and resistances. But I was using fire link armor to increase my scorching ray damage. However, this build does not have a lot of mana regeneration. So I was using Elrond's amulet and scorching ray was linked with elemental focus iron will because it does not increase my mana consumption. Increased burning damage because it has low mana consumption and then I think I was using reduced mana support gem. You can also use vengeance with uh, life gain on hit to increase your survivability. Also enduring cry was linked with blood magic and you must keep your endurance charges at max stack at all times. Once you complete cruel labyrinth it becomes a lot easier to sustain your righteous fire and to maintain maximum stack of endurance charges. And that is mainly because of this node. Increases your damage per endurance charge, also gives 8% reduced elemental damage taken while at maximum endurance charges, which also reduces damage you take from righteous fire. And finally it gives 25% chance to gain maximum endurance charges if you were to gain endurance charge. At this point vitality aura might not be necessary anymore. And you can replace it with flammability linked with blasphemy. At level 65 I upgraded my helmet to formless inferno. Equipped Rise of Phoenix Shield and Merciless Lab was piece of cake. And from Merciless Lab I got Unstoppable node. This node is really good. Basically you become immune to being frozen, immune to temporal chain curse slow and reduce some other annoying slow effects. Now alternative items. I upgraded my weapon into Singularity which is very cheap but has just a little bit less damage than Dorian's Catalyst. Reduced mana cost of skills is also very useful. And because Righteous Fire does not have that big of area of effect, nearby enemies are always injured and take increased damage from your Righteous Fire. Next, Helmet. Wolf's Vision. Very good helmet. Increases maximum life if no items are corrupted. Also increases Chaos Resistance which is very needed. And gives 100 life regeneration per second if no worn items are corrupted. And finally, if you can afford, buy Calm's Heart. 
It will increase your maximum life and righteous fire damage a lot. Gloves, belts and boots are just to increase your maximum life and to cover your resistances. As for amulet, eventually you will want marble amulet. Preferably with increased fire damage, maximum life and some resistances. Just a quick note, always carry one place to remove burning, which stops your righteous fire. Now regarding the shield, Rise of the Phoenix, it can be replaced with Saffel's frame. And I think Saffel's frame is a better choice. Because this build already has more than enough life regeneration and physical damage mitigation. So the weakness is elemental resistances. And this shield gives 4% to all maximum resistances. You won't be able to block attacks, but you will be able to block spell damage. Now to quickly look at my gem links. Scorching Ray is linked with Control Destruction, Elemental Focus and Iron Will. You either need level 20 purity of fire or you can use level 90 purity of fire linked with Empower. And this will give you 4% additional maximum fire resistances. Now Righteous Fire is nothing special. Righteous Fire linked with Elemental Focus, increased area of effect and increased burning damage. There is nothing else you can link it with except for Concentrated Effect. But I never use it because I don't like swapping gems. And during Cry linked with Blood Magic, increased duration and also while Immortal Call. But while Immortal Call is completely optional. Also Stone Golem, flammability linked with Blasphemy and Flame Dash. Now a little bit about skill tree. Normally you would not have enough intelligence for blue gems. So for that you will be using jewel. One of them is brute force solution. If you equip it here you will get up to 64 intelligence. Also take big intelligence and dexterity nodes. And the rest of the jewels if possible should have increased intelligence or dexterity. And of course our useful styles like increased maximum life, increased fire damage, increased damage over time. Also you will be having problems with mana using Scorching Ray. So this wheel over here increases your maximum life and reduces mana cost of skills. You can find link to the full passive skill tree in video description. And for final ascendancy points I took Unbreakable. You become immune to stuns and also increases your physical damage reduction. And finally pros and cons. While this is not the strongest build but because of this high life regeneration you can do nearly every map mod. No life regeneration map mod is obviously a big no, but all the other map mods are doable. Just be careful of minus max uh, res map mods combined with vulnerability cores. Corrupting blood or bleed doesn't really hurt you. And because physical damage mitigation is mostly from your endurance charges, reduced armor map mods doesn't really hurt that much. While your damage won't be that high, but you will be able to take a punch. I was testing this build tankiness against Uber Rizaro, Normal Aziri and some breaches. And the only problem was elemental damage. That's why Rise of the Phoenix shield is not as good as Saffel's frame for this build. As for breach lords I only did fire one and it took quite some time to kill it. But I must admit this build is probably not gonna be doing well inside breaches. Also tried few red tier maps and it was ok. I haven't tried any highest tier maps because I don't have them. But this build probably wouldn't be able to kill the strongest bosses. One last note how to improve your damage. You could change your rings but you would lose a lot of life regeneration. Or maybe just one ring and replace it with high life and increased fire damage. And also maybe increased energy shield because it would also increase your righteous fire damage. Weapon can be replaced with Dorianis Catalyst and if you can afford very expensive jewels. Maximum life combined with fire damage and damage over time. I also need to mention Labyrinth Enchantments. For boots you need life regeneration after being hit. As for helmet there are a few options. Increased effect of buffs granted by a stone golem. This would increase your life regeneration. Or you can get righteous fire damage or radius. It is hard to roll what you want so if you can get enduring cry, cooldown recovery or buff effect also take it. Or even increase flammability course effect. You might even consider getting scorching ray cast speed or scorching ray damage. Well this video is already too long. I hope I didn't forget to mention anything but I will be doing another video. And in the next video I will be doing some testing with this build. Even more life regen just for science. And also some testing regarding primordial eminence jewels and golems. So that's it for now and see you soon.